شريك لك نبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك نبيك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونصلي ونسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Our dear viewers جميعا all of you today We pray that you guys have been in good health and in Iman It's been a while we have another amazing podcast for you guys um, we have the two straight shooters with me our Ustad uh, brother Dawood and then we also have brother Ali Dean with me how are you guys doing Alhamdulillah all That's good right. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah doing good also make sure that your thing is close enough because uh, yeah okay well, it's, it's okay otherwise <coughs> so brothers and sisters today we will be dealing a lot with something that is prevalent in this country that we're living in and the West in general, which is ideologies. Mm. Because many times people think they can be Muslim and believe in Islam and also have different other beliefs to go along with it, right? And it just seems that people who do this believe that any belief really is compatible with Islam, mm. right? And is that true is what we're going to get down to today, inshallah ta'ala. So first, we're, we're going to tackle in this podcast the concept of liberalism and what it does to a person and whether liberalism is compatible with Islam. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is very important because what, what are some of the things, guys, that, that, that liberalism has influenced? It just in our society that we live in, just pretty much everything. Yeah, right. The foundations, the, the bedrock, the everything. fabric, right, right, right. Right. the philosophy, the good type of government, schools, the education. It's fluttered with this stuff, mm -hmm. right? TV shows, entertainment, right? So we're going to talk about what that is because even sometimes you hear this term being thrown around, liberal, liberalism, liberal, a lot. What does that mean? Mm. So the definition, as per Oxford Dictionary, reads... The willingness to respect, accept behavior or opinions different from one's own uh, opinions and openness, have, being open to new ideas, right? So again, willingness to respect or accept behavior or opinions different from one's own opinions and being open to new ideas. Okay. Okay. Then I want to also add something that is a branch, which is pluralism. And pluralism is a condition or system in which two or more states, groups, principles, um, or sources of authority coexist, right? So even religions, they coexist. The idea is not to that one is better than the other, but everyone lives with each other in harmony and you live alongside each other. Mm -hmm. Um, because no one is no one's truth is what they use mm. no, one's, no one's truth yeah. is more true than the others mm -hmm. everything truth becomes relative mm. right so there's no like the one and only religion it's like well you know it's true for you and this is true for me yeah subjective so we're gonna deal with all this today inshallah mm. so um First, I'm going to read some verses of the Qur'an that I'm going to direct our viewers to. So if you guys could go to the third chapter, which is Ali Imran, verse 85. Um, that says, And whoever seeks a way of life other than this way, a submission, meaning this way of life of Islam, whoever seeks another way will find that it will not be accepted from him and in the life in the hereafter, they will be from the losers. So that's a categorical statement from Allah that Islam is what? Uh, the way that's going to be accepted. It's mm. the only way. No. There's nothing else, right? No. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And then we have, In the deen and the Allah al-Islam, wa maqtalifa al-ladheena utul kitab 
illa min ba'di ma ja'ahum ma ja'a ma ja'ahum al-'ilm baghyan baynahum wa man yakfur bi ayatillah fa inna Allah sali'u al-hisab that indeed the religion in the sight of Allah the only religion in the sight of Allah that's acceptable is Islam and those who were given the scripture did not differ except after knowledge had come to them out of jealousy and animosity between themselves and whoever disbelieves in the verses of Allah then Allah then Allah is uh, the most swift in taking accountability right or or holding people to account then we have in this in, in surah al-baqarah verse 120 wa lan tarda anka al-yahud wa an-nasara hatta tattabi'a millatuhum that the Jews and the Christians will never accept you except when you take their way right mm. so you can be nice to them and you can you know but this is what Allah is telling us i'm not saying this don't say all oh, usman now is anti semitic <laughs> no this is something in our in our quran that they won't accept you right until you follow their mindset until you follow their way of life and yes they do have a way of life right a deen is the the term deen is most um uh, defined the best way defined is way of life you say religion you know, it's a way of life so they will not accept you in totality they may say i like your sambus mm-hmm. and this and that whatever you give them Picking two, but yeah. the only time they will love you and accept you wholly and wholesome is if you take their way then we have um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, هو الذي أرسل uh, هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كله ولو كره المشركون. He is the one who has sent forth his messenger with guidance and and the truth and the true religion that he may make it prevail over all different ways of life. So this is another categorical statement: is that the goal and objective of Allah Azza wa Jal for the Deen? is that it supersedes it overcomes mm. it dominates all ways of life anything you can think of any ideology any ism and schism okay and with that we will begin so the first question i have and we're going to give it to ustad daud so far from what you've heard mm. the definition of liberalism pluralism and the verses in which that we've mentioned okay do you think that liberalism is compatible with Islam? No. And no. Th- okay. Well, no, no, most definitely not. And it's not, it's, there might be like, you could say that there might be some ideological points that we may even agree upon. Yes. There might be, like in terms of uh, the, the, the societal point of less having multiple religions in the society you, you can go back to the Kutub al-Tariq the books of history and Tariq al-Islam and having non-Muslims within our society and giving them adalat and respecting mm. them and you know and, but this is not to say that we agree with their way of life mm. it's just in, that's, in the sense of you're giving them their hukuk their rights yeah. so the fact you don't agree with their way of life doesn't mean you oppress them and that's not what we're calling to mm-hmm. so we have to preface that in the beginning but we do believe in an ultimate truth and in an ultimate way towards Allah and that is in submission to Allah alone and following his prophetic the Prophet Sallallahu prophetic tradition alayhi salatu so that's the that's the first and foremost thing is that liberalism contradicts Islam in many aspects of life mm. First and foremost, in our aqidah. And when I say aqidah, I mean in our core faith, in our core principles, in our, our very Doctrine. creed, yeah. our very belief system. Um, you might ask why. Well, you have to understand a little history here and how s- secularism and liberalism came to be. And looking back to the books of history, going back to European history, that this is a theology that was يعني, born out of you can say uh christianity mm. that's really the awesome the, the the life and the christianity that was within europe that was oppressive you know the church dominance of the society and all that stuff and then you had a birth 
of a new revolution, a new yeah. age, age of what they call science, an age mm -hmm. of knowledge. The in Reformation, which, yeah. Yes. And we, a lot of us know this, in which by they decided to do away with the system of church and king mm -hmm. and having religion in your life. They basically said, you know what? Religion is for you at home, for you as an individual. The church. But when it came to our society, it's not relevant. Mm -hmm. It's not relevant whatsoever. That is your choice, your way, and a birth of basically all the isms that we know came to be. Yes. The liberalisms, the in individualism, you know, all the isms that we know, communisms, they all came about once this yani, revolution took place. Now, in our deen, we don't separate from the way our way of life hmm. and our faith. SubhanAllah. And we don't separate from the rule of Allah from our day-to-day -day life, no. whether it be governments, whether it be our family life, whether it be our individual, how we go about our individual day-to-day -day life at all levels. So you have liberalism saying, do you, that's your way. Everything is subjective. There's no ultimate truth. Then you have Islam, where you have the ultimate truth. You have a guideline that's the way of the deen. So right there, when you look at that definition or just that breakdown, you see that Islam and liberalism are two different things. Mm -hmm. So and whatever is given birth from liberalism is also going to contradict Islam. That all the other isms that we're going to, you know, inshallah, for, discuss for in the future, they're going to contradict, but they all, it's good that we're discussing this first, it's because they all, at, at a core level, are given birth to the idea that essentially, you could almost say atheism, at the core is atheism, mm -hmm. and the idea that religion is subjective. Your faith is subjective and there's no ultimate truth. Mm -hmm. So in Islam, we believe in the ultimate truth. And we, we believe in supporting the ultimate truth and that the ultimate truth should be supreme. Yes. Right. That's, so it's impossible. So you have essentially a circle and a square now. So it's not even compatible anymore. So at that level, I believe we should understand with a little history, without making it too boring, where liberalism come, came from, what it calls to, what mm. is the core principles, what are its faith, and then what is Islam. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then um, I would also share with uh, Ali Dean. Mm -hmm. again, I want to repeat the definition of uh, liberalism, which is a willingness to respect or accept behavior or opinions different from one's own and openness and being open to different or to new ideas. What do you think about that? Like in terms of being a Muslim, is that is that does that go does that uh, coincide with the principles of a Muslim? Mm -hmm. Is to be open to different ideas, or to accept right or respect other people's own different you know ideas and behaviors? Okay, no, great question. Um, First disclaimer, I'm wearing sunglasses indoor today. <laughs> um, not because I want to be cool or whatnot, uh, but because uh, I was at the eye doctor, so everything's kind of bright right now. Um, but to answer, answer your question, uh, Aki, I think um, the most important thing to understand is that Islam has uphold its principles since day one. And the thing about liberalism is that they change w w w with time changing. Ever right? changing. Uh, so... Today, you might even consider a person, forget being a Muslim, if, if someone just considers themselves a, a liberal, uh, you know, and he may accept something to some degree today, but then when it changes tomorrow, he may disagree with it over time. He say, ah, that's a little too much. And I'm going to give something that may sound extreme, uh, but we're all adults here, and I think we need to have conversations like this. To some degree now, They've accepted the LGBTQ, all these letters, community, right? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, if some say like, subhanAllah, uh, if, if incest happens, no. they're going to disagree with it, yeah. right? They're going to be like, that's too much. No, we don't agree with it as much. But tomorrow, when that new age or new group of people come about and they claim that they're all believing this, you know, in, in, in this Consent. community and all these things, yeah. and, and they push that forward, 
then you have no choice but to accept it because you've accepted everything today that's right. you have to accept everything else tomorrow as yeah. well yeah. and Islam never stands for that that's the beauty of Islam and unfortunately other religions have been dealing with this issue and and, and you can see it in, in Christian households and, 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 and yeah all these uh, all these other religions it's that they've been open to it so often because they've been interpreting in their own ways their own religion and yeah. we've been going by the, the same aqidah the same structure the same <laughs> doctrines nothing has changed so this openness as a Muslim is going to open these doors for you that's going to steer you away from the right path. You gave that ayah uh, um, in, in Surah, Al -Ali, uh, Surah Ali Imran. Yeah. There's this other ayah that goes with it, right? It's, it's similar. So Allah says in, in uh, Surah Al Insan, He says, sabila imma shakirin wa imma kafura. Yeah. He says, Surely we have shown him the way, mm. whether he now be grateful or ungrateful. Yes. It's very simple. It's, it's cutthroat right there. So you know the way. But because you are, you know, your life experience is, is a little different than mine, you're like, okay, well, let me interpret, you know, that, that way a little bit differently. Let me let me figure out, you know, how way to, to so I can make it more easier for myself or and for the next community. X, Y, and Z, all these interpretations. And if you go about it, I don't know, this other thing that I want to mention is that it sounds almost like a new form of religion for themselves as well. This paganism that they're still pushing. I thought this this ended a long time ago, but they're still pushing it today because they're saying you have to accept everything, everyone's choices, everyone's differences in your household. If you don't accept it, then you're against us. But isn't isn't that the same thing? Like if we're against you, shouldn't you be open to that? Shouldn't you be okay yeah. with us being a little bit different than you contradiction. are? Contradiction. Huh. Yeah. So th they live with this contradiction, but they're going to say, brother, love is love, and, and uh, no, you got to push no. these things. Yeah. So subhanAllah, as a Muslim, if you follow the way that we're talking about here, then the, the way that, it's, that is against the sunnah, the uh, way that is against Allah and, and, his, and his messages and what he's been putting out, his revelations, then you are setting yourself self up for failure, subhanAllah. Yeah. So that's yeah. as yeah. simple as that. Like. So, um, uh, Brother Dawood, do you think, just based off of that definition that we read, and pluralism, just everybody living with each other and, you know, not trying to make somebody change, because you trying to make somebody change mm. is an indication that what they're on is incorrect, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that the people that hold this ideology believe it even for themselves? Or do they try to make other people change to believe like them? Perfect. Um, it goes to answer your question. The people who are essentially kind of the, you know, the f people in the front line pushing this, these kind of ideologies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some things that we mentioned that the brother mentioned, uh, these uh, contradictions that they have. Yes. Brother Ali, Brother Ali. <laughs> Ali, Ali, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. sorry. Ali. Uh, mentioned that uh, there are some contradictions. Yeah. Essentially, number one, uh, they they actually are not very tolerant. Right. They mm. actually have their own way of life and their own mentality that mm. they think everybody should fit into. And study liberalism and the history of liberalism in governments, in schools, mm -hmm. and see whether they are actually tolerant people. They aren't. The history has proven that. Now, going back to ask, uh, answering the question, pluralism, yes, they, they genuinely believe because... Like we say, you could say pluralism is attached to liberalism. Mm -hmm. It was it basically was born from li liberalism. Now, essentially, those people who believe in pluralism, they believe their way of life is the right, right, right way of life. No. And automatically, if you believe your way of life is correct, then naturally what you're going to do is call people towards this mentality, mm -hmm. call people towards this no. ideology, promote it, right? And teach it. It's is essentially they have their own da'wah in, right. truth, in truth be told whether it be the alphabet group whether it be liberalism they all promote and do da'wah to their cause they right. have banners they have groups they push their things they they have the media they have books it's out there so right. there's it, it's no different than any other religion we have to accept the fact that liberalism and atheism is a religion within itself right. it's a it's a it's a faith it's a system you know, it has its own sha'air. Mm. You know, like we have sha'air al Islam. Mm. Yeah. We have yeah. Adhan, yeah. and you have, you know, Salatul Jum'ah. Then you're like, okay, those people are Muslim. You know, you can tell yeah. there's symbolic things that represent Islam. Right. You have symbolic things that represent the new isms. Mm. Yeah. You have your veganism, 
you have your climate change, you have your alphabet group, you have your Black Lives Matter, you have this, you have that. Women empowerment. Women empowerment. revolution. All these revolutionary things and, you know, kind of social justice stuff, it all, the root of it all is liberalism. Mm, absolutely. It's, it's the faith of liberalism. So they are definitely in belief and they definitely want to promote this way of life and they view it as superior to all other forms of life. Nah. Nah. That's a fact. And it, they believe their political system is the best. They believe their way of life is the best. And if they had it their way, they would dominate the world and make this the way of life. Simple. <laughs> oh, let's get to that. So what do you think? Um, like, you know, I, I, I find what you said is interesting because like the West has been doing that. Like they have made campaigns and crusades across 100%. the world to spread their ideology. Mm -hmm. Like what was the Cold War? Was right. to, they, they, were, they were willing to kill millions of people to spread this ideology, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so, when, when, so, so don't get it twisted. When you hear them think and say things like, oh, you have to accept everyone. They don't accept <laughs> everyone. Religions <laughs> cause right? all wars. Exactly. The religions are the most you see violent. What I'm like, uh -huh. this is uh -huh. the concept of liberalism. Mm -hmm. I remember even Tony Blair with, with George Bush said um, before the Iraq war, they called it a crusade. Mm. Right, yeah. so they went into the Muslim lands, killed many hundreds and thousands of people, millions of casualties over the time span of 10, 20, 30 years for the sake of spreading their democracy, which is liberalism at the end of the day. Right. I mean, it's, you know, the two are not, so don't think Republicans are just like, no, we are disagreeing with that. No, Remember, they all joined hands in hand. And that, was, that was a bipartisan move right. to, 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 to spread that jihad yeah. I want to call it jihad, so they understand what this. It's a jihad of democracy, right? So when U.S. forces go to Muslim lands, they go to Somalia, Libya, and they go to Afghanistan, Iraq, and Vietnam. Let's not forget that, yeah. right? Where they didn't even declare war; they just invaded that country and wanted to kill and fight. That's all liberalism. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So don't think that the, the people like um, Trump and stuff, they, they're, not, they're not for that. They would love for their ideology to spread everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need to pretty much they're not really ask. Neutral. Right. Because they'll ask neutral. you about jihad yeah. and say, oh, well, you believe you spread Islam with the sword? Yeah. <laughs> You're still spreading democracy mm -hmm. by the day with by bombs. nuclear bombs. <laughs> nuclear bombs. Yeah. Hiroshima. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's let's. let's no, I mean, just sure to add saying. to that real no. quick. Um, mm -hmm. Given that people, you know, will always disagree about, you know, politics, um, liberal, liberalism's core aim um, is to create like a, a generally accepted mechanism um, for settling political disputes without, you know, undue coercion. OK, so so they try to like basically give everyone a say uh, in government through like fair as they say, fair procedures, mm -hmm. um, so that citizens can have like a, a consent to like say whatever they want, but still go against the government. Okay, so if, for example, if I say go this direction and this is the right direction, you know, you can end up exactly where you want to end up. Their thing is like, okay, what do you think about it? What do you think about it? Do you want to go this way? And some people are, may not have the knowledge, the capabilities, and still have their opinions based on certain experiences and knowledges that they've yeah. been through. So they'll say, hey, if you want to, if you want to go a certain route or take a certain, you know, uh, different direction, we're going to empower that for you because it's a sense of like individualism as well because you're yep. thinking for yourself. You're not letting someone else think for you. And so we're going to push that ideology. And that is, that is like the core main uh, doctrine that they tr they try to like implement into everyone else everyone's life subhanallah so that's 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 the thing they have going on is is weird well like um, yeah you know and i think uh, it's it's a game of majority yeah and numbers mm -hmm. and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if you if you obey uh the majority of people on earth you will be misguided uh, when and yeah. here yes yeah. this is the ideology here is that hey you get a bunch of people, majorities, and right. and the more people you have, you have the more votes you win. Mm -hmm. All right, it's not about the truth, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you see the the, the moralism is going out the window. Mm -hmm. Soon you'll have a group. There's a group in um, North America called NAMBLA. Mm -hmm. NAMBLA is an association that's been out for a, a little a little bit a while, and they you know what their acronym stand for: North American Men and Boy Lovers Association. <laughs> 
And 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 their aim is to lobby for the act of pedophilia mm -hmm. to be a norm. And based off of the principle the, based off of the principles of liberalism and the things that they have allowed to be acceptable, I mean, how can you reject that? Mm -hmm. See, I mean, think about it. Like, you, like, what argument do you use against them? Like, if you're if you're one of these people who believe in like this being like the the best thing after ketchup, mm -hmm. what argument do you have against them? Because every argument you throw at them, it was already used for homosexuality. Mm -hmm. It was used for bestiality and all these other things, mm -hmm. right? So you have to let them. All right, all right. All right, and mm. I, it's just, it's weird, but this is just where we're going right now. Mm -hmm. Just complete deviation. Yeah. Now, and so my next question is about pluralism. Now, pluralism, just to remind us all, is a condition or a system in which two or more states, groups, principles, or sources of authorities coexist. Brother Devil, do you think that is a practical um, idea? Um. Is it practical? And has it ever happened? <laughs> it's happening now. Man. You could say pluralism is kind of what America represents. Right. Yes. Right? America represents like people coming from different walks of life with different belief systems, different faiths, and coexisting. Yeah. So there is that sense of pluralism. But is it one way more dominant than the other? I think essentially, yes. There is a dominant like way of life that everything else, like you could say, all the minority faiths. That's why there's something called minority. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, called minorities for a reason. <laughs> there's a dominant American way yeah. of life, yeah. right? They Yes, they accept minorities. That's about the only difference you could say between يعني, pluralism. They won't tell you outright, essentially, our way is better than your way. Yeah. But it's pretty much understood. When you watch the news or when you read the books, when you talk about foreign countries, when you talk about a foreign cultures it's pretty much understood that their way of life and their understanding of how to live is superior than all absolutely others. that's pretty much understood absolutely and ethnocentrism yeah any, anyone who anyone who watches the news knows this they believe their way is better than everybody else's right. way so i don't really think it's truly authentic yes everyone's coexisting to a degree mm -hmm. but is it an authentic representation of what they claim to be this little you know rainbow paradise mm -hmm. no and, and so this is this is the point is that like if if we we look at this that definition then it would be that they shouldn't have a problem with a muslim who's a practicing muslim be the president of the united states of america mm. yeah will yeah. they ever allow that no Never. i mean look at Never. the politicians that are even working their way up into power the more they go up, the more disbelieving they become. Yes, that's a great point. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You think they'll allow? I'm pretty sure they spoke to all of them. Say, hey, listen here. Is it that uh, way? Your, your Muslimic <laughs> culture stops here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cut yeah. The you want to go up? Okay. You want to? You want to? You want to climb the ladder? <laughs> then you're going to eat the food we give you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. facts. One thousand. You see what I'm saying? And if you don't get the heck out to the curb, like, like there's no other way yeah. because the dominant society in the west is represented by a culture that is godless yeah mm -hmm. it does not want allah in the mm -hmm. picture period period or anyone yeah. who even uh, uh resembles just a little bit of being god fearing yeah in their you know belief system they don't want that they don't yeah. like the belief that's why even Do you guys remember donald trump when donald trump was president they said oh my god no he's he's given the evangelicals platform mm. and he's a mm, christian yeah. he's saying god in church and he's probably the most the sacrilegious <laughs> guy but you know what's interesting is that most of the people who come um from different places they come from outside the u.s the western countries in general mm -hmm they actually end up immersing themselves in those cultures. So th by the second generation, totally Americanized. Mm. Like it's almost, <clears throat> there's nothing left of them, yeah. of their culture, their heritage. The group that's the hardest for um, a, a people who have these ideologies to do this with are the Muslims. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we have 
Like we, this is a way of life that we live. We're yeah. not just some cultural Christians Correct. who just drop everything and just, you know, we're chameleons. We go and just blend in with every right. cut, you know. So we have principles that a lot. He said, "Look, if you want to be Muslim, this you got to live by this." Yeah. Right. So there's certain things we have to do, um, and that's why it's very difficult for them to make sway us completely away. Correct. You know. Unless I mean you're just selling all your marbles, then that's that's a different situation. Mm-hmm. And we do see those, right? We do see those sellouts. But like it's 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 interesting. First generation, second generation, you still have a strong Muslim um, community here, yeah. right? Now there's some places that we're kind of failing on, but you know you have that. But with everybody else. I don't. I think that's what they tell them is a uh, scratch your back, a little scratch yours. Right. But it's not what you see. You actually see them enforcing this way of life. Mm. So now you have this person from you know Asia and Africa now celebrating their culture. They're celebrating their holidays, right. New Year's, Christmas, all this stuff. Because for them, it's not a big deal in their religion right. if they have one. Right. It's like, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. But for us, it is. Mm-hmm. Right, we got principles. We have standards, you know. And so, so, so it. I'm not gonna really. Yeah. What do you guys say about that? I was about to say something, but it would have <laughs> took us somewhere else. <laughs> so go ahead, brother Dawood. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if any of you guys have of course, something, I, of before, course, me too. Before we move yeah. on to the uh, last question. In liberalism, the culture of liberalism is strong, mm-hmm. and a lot of the people who come here, they slowly, slowly adapt the norm of the society, which is liberalism. Yeah. I'm, and. This is just a fact of like يعني, Bani Adam and how we're built and how we're wired. Unless a person is really conscious and has a strong sense of Islamic identity and has strong ilm and a strong backbone, they're going to fall into يعني, adopting these people's ways and, and, and their ideology and their madhab. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, uh, if the person kn- knows uh, the ayat that we mentioned earlier and knows the Islamic stance, and it has a strong sense of Islamic identity, mm-hmm. and like the things we mentioned in previous con- uh, in in previous podcasts when we were talking about celebrations and birthdays, and having a basically a sense of not feeling inferior, right? Feeling that yeah, I, my this is the truth. I'm upon the truth. I don't need to adapt to other people. I no. don't need to follow their ways and their customs. I don't need to adopt their theology mm-hmm. and their madhab. I'm good with what I have with Islam and the Sunnah. Yeah. And, and that's what Muslims badly need to do, in, I would say, in our society today, yeah. especially the youth. Um, the, there's a weakness in, in, in ignorance of Islamic knowledge, of their creed, and lack of practice, right? It's, it's, not, it's nice to be all theological and talk about the theology, but we're people of amal. Mm. If you don't have amal and you don't have deeds and you don't have actions, well, then you're going to go downhill. Yeah. You know, your iman is only going to be built with obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. Do you think it's possible to have both, to be, to, to accept the, just these two um, concepts and be a practicing to the T Muslim? Do you think it's possible? Impossible. Mm-hmm. Because we just mentioned some core beliefs. Like, if you look back to the tarikh or seerah of the Prophet <coughs> Sallam, or the seerah of the Salaf, mm-hmm. And you go to them with what you what you just mentioned, liberalism or pluralism. That contradicts exactly what they did. The Prophet ﷺ sent messengers to outside of Arabia, sent down sent messengers to tribes yeah. to tell them to convert to Islam, to testify La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, to abandon their customs and traditions mm-hmm. of ignorance. Right. Which is essentially telling you this is the deen of the truth. Come to it. The Quran came as a furqan. Yeah. Tabarak al nazzal al-furqan. A furqan meaning it divided. It, it divided the people of truth and the tr- people of falsehood. So it's it's not there to conform. It's there to reform. It's there mm. to change the society. Yeah. And f- if you're just being all kumbaya and holding hands with shirk and kufr and LGBT and this, this, then what do you really stand for? Are you actually yeah. calling to Islam? Are you calling the people? Are you being da'i Allah? Are you being someone who's spreading the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or you're just someone who's being a chameleon and conforming yeah. the ways of, of the shayateen no backbone no backbone you know no one's saying uh, uh, be aggressive or be ignorant the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had his hikmah and the, the seerah of uh, the salaf al-salih is filled with hikmah in terms of calling people to Islam but 
you giving them their hukuk and you agreeing with them and accepting them is two different things completely. Mm. You give them their rights, you give them their respect, you, sh- you stay firm on your identity, your akhlaq. Your akhlaq is actually superior. Problem is, we have a sense of inferiority, like I mentioned earlier, we don't, it comes from ignorance. We don't understand the beauty of our sunnah. We don't understand the beauty of our aqidah and our belief system. So then the moment we go to other societies, we feel inferior when we see the tall buildings and the cars and the big universities and the professor with the suit. Next thing you know, the, the guy's cowering away and he's trying to adopt something mm. that he's not. That's a crisis that ha- a lot of the Muslims go through. When they, of, yeah, well, yeah, this is something we're being tested with. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is great points that we're making today. Alhamdulillah. You know, the thing I want to add to that is, is, is very quick is this question. If a doctor walks in, you know, you're in a, you're in a doctor's uh, patient room and a doctor walks in and he's not wearing his white coat, he probably has some shorts on, let's say he's smoking, doing all these weird things, and he no. tells you he's a doctor, would you let him, you know, operate on you or do what he needs to do? To do? No. But <laughs> liberalism pushes him to say, do whatever you want to do. Doctors have a structure they follow. There's a certain time they go to school, study, and all these things to become a doctor. But these guys are saying, no, do anything your way, do everything your way, figure out how you want to do it, and then you can have that freedom to express yourself the way you want to express yourself. I always go back to this analogy of the mother telling the son, don't touch the hot iron. I've, t- I've you know, tapped into this so many times. Even in Islam, it says, when, when you're told, don't do this and do this and do not do that, it is for your own good to save you, right? Safeguard you. So when, someone, when the mother tells the son, hey, don't touch the hot iron, it's because the son is going to burn his hand. A young boy, he doesn't understand yet. But liberalism, uh, people who, who follow that ideology are going to say, well, do whatever you want to do. It's, no. If it burns, it's okay. You know, okay. just, you know, you're going to learn, just play, have fun. You know, it's, it's just an iron, do whatever you do. And the young boy will touch it, what happens, burns his hands. They may unplug it at first, touch it, and then say it's not burning, then plug it back in and make you touch it. Mm. SubhanAllah. And then that's going to take you away. So these people, man, I, to be a Muslim and to uphold that at the same time is impossible. You have to give up one for the other. Is, 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 they, they cannot work together at the same time. It's yeah. literally two, two things that clash. Yeah, okay, yeah. they have an agenda. We also have an agenda as well. Mm. Just because they you know, put stickers in and give you ice cream and flowers just to make it look prettier does not, does not mean that their agenda is still not uh, uh, to, get, to remove you from the fold of Islam. It's acceptors. Yeah. Yes, yes. At the end of the day, I want to say one ayah that is really relative to what we're talking about, specifically no, no. pluralism. Pluralism is a belief, like we said, that you know, there's. It's almost like you're saying there's subjective, the truth. Yeah. We're, ah, we're allowed, you know, yeah. coexist, kumbaya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, like I said earlier, you can exist amongst one another, and there can be a neighbor that's not a Muslim. You give them their hukuk. Yeah. But when you're, sa- we're saying accepting it as a truth, mm. saying that's that that's that person's truth. No. This is right, my truth. Right. This is his truth. So saying there's multiple truths. But the Quran says, mm-hmm. So say to them, O Muhammad, sallam, that this is my sirat, this is my path, yeah. a straight path. <coughs> and don't follow the other subul, the that's, plurals. That's actually interesting because so, yeah. Allah here is telling you there are different ways. Most definitely. There different are paths. many different subul. That's, that's jama yeah. for sabil, yeah. right? So for just for one way. Uh, but it's jama, it's plural. So it's, Allah is telling you many different ways. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's of course we don't say Islam is the only way. Just like there's many different ways, you know, to go to hellfire. Mm-hmm. But there's only one way to go to jannah. Right. So there's no a, a, ta- a thousand different ways. And so this is important to know when Muslims speak like this: my truth, your truth, Ali. That's mm. your truth. And becoming well, my so truth opinionated. Is like yeah, yeah. And Very like, opinionated. like, do you know how ridiculous that sounds? Because yeah. the whole idea and, and, the, and the concept of truth is that there's only one. There could be many lies, right. but there's only one truth, right? And so when there is one truth, then someone is, there's, there's someone's on the correct way. Everybody mm-hmm. else is wrong, right? right? Mm-hmm. But it can't be that everybody's on the right way right. because we're all doing different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Foundationally, we're different, yeah. right? And like we we're saying again, we're not telling you go kill people. Mm-hmm. So we're not telling you go and destroy people, but the idea that 
Muslims that are now are like, hey, Masakintan, leave them alone. They, they're good people. They did this for us. Yes, we're grateful for the benefits that we get in this country. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And we do thank you because yeah. the Prophet said, if you don't thank the people for, for the things they do for you, then you haven't thanked Allah. Mm -hmm. So it's a part of our deen to be grateful. We are grateful mm -hmm. for the things that you've done, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, we don't compromise our way yeah. because Rather, you I did. I would even add to that is that actually the best way of shukur is to want hidayah yes mm. you want, want hidayah for mm. guidance for them subhanallah it's testify la ilaha illallah <laughs> muhammad yeah. rasulullah yeah. and i know even imam nawi he speaks about the hadith where he says uh, the prophet sallallahu he says um, you know it's uh, uh, that that you have to love for your brother what you love for yourself mm, right. and the imam nawi he mentions that this ha this hadith this love is is encompass encompasses yashmilu al yahud wa nasra wa nasara right al yahudi wa nasrani it encompasses all of them why because the least amount of love the very least it should be that you want hidayah and guidance mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. but what's the point of loving them and you don't want them to go to jannah you're okay with them going to hellfire on their way and you're just like oh i'm going to give you a hug mm -hmm. yeah. you see and on day of judgment I'm like this guy here who is hugging me for the past 30 years never told me about islam Mahmoud over here, mm -hmm. he never showed me the way. Right. Oh, Allah put, put double punishment on this guy. You see what I'm saying? And we don't want to be those people. Last question, and this kind of goes into what we were speaking about, mm -hmm. is how has, how have these, um, how has this ident or this ideology, liberalism, how has it affected the Muslims, Ali? Oh, wow. What are some ways that you've seen? Talk to us about, you know, we're people on That's the a ground. Good question. As uh, as like as like Durat, we can think of a hundred ways even, right? Yeah. But tell us some ways because we're on the ground. And yeah. as Durat, you need to be aware of what's going on in your surroundings. Yeah. You need to be aware of the prevalent ideologies that are there. You mm -hmm. can't just say, you know what, I read the Quran and I know the Sunnah and let me go back in my cave. Yeah. You need to know about what's going on around you. If you if you want your da'wah to be effective, right? Yeah. And sometimes that means that you're exposed to the way even Muslims are and mm -hmm. the changes they've made, mm -hmm. right, and the deviances and their attitude. So, what, what, how, how have you seen that this has influenced our brothers and sisters? Yeah, you know, there's no ending to this answer. Really, yeah. it's it's mm. it's never mm. ending. Allah, it's 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 impacted um, our communities um, at very high rates. And Subhanallah, uh, it's not mostly us, but the the next generation to come that are going to be more and more affected. You know, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Like, f just take for example, when when a brother is, is would have what they legalize smoking weed now. Yeah. That's not that's not Islam, right? That's that ideology. Yep. When a sister takes off her clothes and walks around and they tell her this is freedom, this is not Islam. That's their ideology. When they back talk to their parents or say, you know, I'm 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 an adult and I can do whatever I want and act mm. however I want, that is not Islam. That is their ideology. Islam always had a structure. The structure has never changed. It is that us is for us to accept Islam, not for Islam to accept us. Meaning, meaning we don't. We don't need to modernize Islam. We need to Islamicize modernization. Subhanallah. Right? Very simple. Very simple. And so um, you'll see somebody right now, they'll go to college and, and they will not be surrounded by the Muslim community mm -hmm. anymore, right? And this is where they're attacked a lot as well. We preach this in our communities a lot, like we want our children to get education and become wealthy and, and have so much knowledge. But when we push Islam to the side, Islam's principles in, get, uh, in, in aiding that and in, 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 you know guiding them on the right path, this is where they try to attack you because somehow they realize that this person has a weakness in their faith. Mm. And when they find that, it's like someone who's just kind of waiting for you, like, like a lion waiting to you know prowl on this this the young deer or whatever it is that they attack they just kind of wait for you to to catch you at your lowest when you're at when your faith is slipping away from you and they tell you okay you don't need this you don't need to pray five times a day you don't need to pray at this time pray whenever you want to but come and hang out with me and i'm, I'm going to show you what gives you happiness what gives you freedom what gives you your rights as a as a man as a human being and we just follow universe or whatever belay that they pick these days so subhanallah it has affected our community and we need to you know, uphold, you know, our, our, our foundations, our, our bedrock, the things that keep us, you know, tight 
and, and, and tighten it so that one day, you know, when we when we come together and we say, okay, what's going on with this person? We, we attack it with, with strength and numbers and not just one of us saying, um, that's wrong, and then they all attack us by mm, ourselves. Yes. Yeah. That's the other thing that's the issue is like yeah. we're, it's, it's maybe three of us sitting here um, talking about this issue, but there's like hundreds and hundreds of them, um, non-Muslim and Muslims that are supporting that. That is like, bro, don't listen to these guys. They're going to be on Twitter today, watch, or tomorrow when this video comes out and they listen to it. They're going to take some small parts of us, uh, 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 parts of this video and try to justify that we are anti or are trying to oppress them and fight them, which is not the case, subhanAllah. So I'm just going to leave it at that, but that is a starting point of what I wanted to mention about that subhanAllah. question. SubhanAllah. Uh, Brother Dawood, in I know you're, uh, you've been living in Canada for some time. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Um, what are some of the things that you see, though? Even on social media, everything has become universal, really. It is. Mm -hmm. so Global village. Ha yeah. So, like, holidays of the, the non-Muslims, the way Muslims behave, and universities, even MSAs, mm -hmm. you know, even brothers and sisters who come to the masjid, um, the people that are asking for reforms in mm -hmm. our Islamic institutions, mm -hmm. right? How has liberalism influenced these people? It has influenced them, Akhil Karim, deeply, mm -hmm. very deeply. Um, when we talk about the influence of liberalism in terms of the ideology of the youngsters, the young generations of today, the Muslims of this world, yeah. in this society, it is the number one thing that influences them. Firstly, the universities, the jamiat. The jamiat, the universities are built upon this ideology. Right. They're built upon atheism, Darwinism, secularism, and what other isms there are. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are literally indoctrination centers mm -hmm. where people go in there at a young age, fragile age, naive, looking up to these professors, and they're just bombarded with ideology. The universities today in the West are much worse than they were 30, 20 years ago. It may be before they were more focused on the sciences and stuff like that, but now it's actual agendas yeah. and ideas being promoted. Yeah. And just, this is our way, or you're mm -hmm. canceled, you gotta accept this way. It's really deep. Yeah. So when you have graduates coming out of these kind of institutions, Muslim sisters, Muslim brothers, they're adopting this stuff deeply. Yeah. They don't. They they see the world through that lens. Yeah. yeah. Where literally liberalism is how they see the world. So now when they they come with these new glasses, fresh new glasses out of that school and graduate, now they use those glasses to look at the Muslim community mm. wow. and Islam. And then they yeah. look at Islam. They're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Liberalism, I was taught this Islam is wrong here, there, right, there, yeah, there. Yeah, they won't say Islam is wrong, you know, because whatever little iman that they have left they'll now, question, though. they'll question. And they'll be like, you know what, maybe it could be another way. Yeah. Maybe it could be like this. And then next thing you know, this is where you come up with these strange kind of like ideas coming into Islam. Mm. Like these massages are promoting weird things. Uh, institutions, student associations, halakat, promoting weird things yeah. that you would have never thought Muslims would be promoting in their da'wah because they were extremely influenced. And that's just at the, at the youth perspective or the university perspective. Then there's the perspective of the family structure mm -hmm. yeah. where that has been completely influenced by liberalism. Right. Where they've adopted their norms and traditions and their idea so the family is no longer the traditional family no. it's no longer the man and the woman and the man has his role the woman has his role right. they don't want that no. and islam we have no doubt in this and let's say this unequivocally without any yani, shame or anything yeah. islam we believe in gender roles mm. we believe that the man is the, ha the man of the house the leader and if you want to get proofs and evidence of this, we'll do this in another time. Oh, we will. We, <laughs> you know, that's clear. Mm -hmm. And then you have the woman who has her role as a mother and as a nurturer. We believe in this. But they don't believe in the natural structure, the fitrah. Yeah. They don't believe in the sunnah. They think it's an oppression. They see women. that as oppression. Ah. So they see the, the honor in destroying the family and bringing liberal ideas and capitalism to the family. Right. Where it's just the woman is a servant for the job, the man is a servant for the job, and you send the school to the, uh, the the child to the school to be indoctrinated. Essentially, you don't have enough structure there. Right. And this is not freedom. This is not liberalism. It's not. It's it's, it's just a lie. Yeah. It's something being sold to the people, and sadly, the Muslim community is bought into it. Yeah. Ethically, yeah, I mean, belief wise, culturally, we've bought into it fully. We've sold all our goods. Yeah. In this world. <laughs> 
and the hereafter to adopt this ideology yeah. so it's just deep the effect is in all aspects of life literally we can answer this question probably for <laughs> two or three saying, hours yeah. i'm telling you we can just go on <laughs> a terrain examples, right? yeah, yeah, yeah just talking about how liberalism how has affected the muslims not even just in the western world but you could say in the in, in the muslim world yeah, I, now, I, I'm yeah. like, li- literally actually saudi mamlaka mm-hmm. the most conservative place that i've ever lived in my life that is adopting like was upon <laughs> Islam, right? Mm, mm. I started when yeah, I went the there in 2014. Are, oh, when I went in 2014, uh, it was you know you got the hate, you had the religious police, shops are closing. Yeah, I mean the deen was very clear there, yeah. very clear. But within the last four or five years, you've seen the change. Mm. And where is that coming from? If you go to the root, 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 liberalism. liberalism. That it's become the global religion, yeah. where it's being pushed upon everyone else. You know what? If you don't conform to this way. You are backwards. Yes. You don't conform to this way. We're going to cut off your aid. Sanction. We're going to sanction you. Mm. We're going to do this. So in reality, they don't believe in freedom of thought and freedom of religion. Mm. They actually believe their way of life and their aqidah is dominant. Is dominant. So this is the truth. That's all Allah. Like we like we said, I see all this stuff happening. Uh, there's many different examples we can go into. Mm-hmm. You know, you have um, people, like we said, question the tenets of our faith. 100%. Right. Well, well, why is Allah here not helping those poor people over there? Why is He not doing this? Yeah. But why did the mm-hmm. Prophet no marry Aisha? And why nah. did He do this? And so, why did the Prophet have nine wives? Is that moral? Mm-hmm. Is, is that something? So why are we doing that? Because we clearly see oppression today. Um, but why is it that, you know, uh, lens, uh, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no marijuana in the Quran. Why come I, how come I can't do that? I'm right. not hurting right. anyone. How right. come someone can't be gay? Uh, What's yeah. wrong with being gay? There's right. nothing wrong with being gay. I know All I have gay friends. Gay, my gay friends don't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. They don't hurt anyone. You know, they even encourage me to pray. Subhanallah. So it's like, where, who are you? <laughs> yeah, those are all the doubts. Who are you? From where are you going? Because yeah. we don't know where you're going. Mm. It's not. It's not with us. You see what I'm saying? So I want to I, everyone take a look here at the screen. I showed you guys the actual uh, right. picture of um, uh, Mr. Jacob Bender. It's not. Is given, and this is a the fruits of the liberalism here. Mr. Jacob Bender received a Blue Taller Award at the Isna Interfaith Banquet in Chicago, Illinois. What the hell is the Abu Talib Award? <laughs> Man, like, so, so I, well, why why stop Abu Talib? Why don't you go to Abu Jahl? Abu Lahab next. Mm. Let's do that. Why not? Yeah. Lahab award. What's going on? <laughs> right. <laughs> let's let's do Utba ibn Rabi'ah. Let's do that. Okay. Let's let's just add people into because when when we start doing this stuff, we're awarding a non-Muslim. It, even it's a, it's an insult to Abu Talib. Oh, Allah is an insult oh, to Abu Talib. Yeah. Abu Talib actually helped this deal. Degrading him. Yeah. Now he didn't die as a Muslim, and out of adab and out of respect for the Prophet because he was very sad when Abu Talib passed away we won't speak ill of Abu Talib but we will not say that he died as a Muslim we know he didn't die as a Muslim okay um, but he at least helped the deen what did Mr. Jacob Bender do and Nika Yehudwai what did he do Yehudwai and he's getting rewarded like he's just, hey if he dies to, I bet you if he found out who Abu Talib was he'd be, he'd be offended we gave him the Abu Talib award. Where's Abu oh. Talib? Wallahi, he, he may be in a better place in Jahannam than you if you die on your way. It's possible. Yeah. Why? See, we're, it's like we don't even have like this idea anymore. Like we care about people. We want them to become Muslims. We're giving them awards, the Abu Talib awards. Would it, wouldn't that encourage enhance? Him. Yeah, that encourage would encourage him, him, him to continue to be. I mean, <laughs> where where did you see anyone got Prophet Muhammad award? Where did you see Musa right, ibn right. Umair award? Mm-hmm. Where did you see Umar ibn Khattab, Abu Bakr? No, no, no. Abu Talib award. Wallahi, yeah. Wallahi you can't make this stuff up. You That's can't make sad. this stuff up. No, and no. this is not like a small organization. This is a huge organization in the, in, 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 in the West here. Right? Trying to conform so much. They're conforming, but this yeah. is the fruits and the influence of liberalism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One One point. I'm glad you brought that up. I just, I just posted this on Instagram a couple of days ago. No, no. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him. He said, he said, whoever is pleased Allah, with the action of people will be gathered with them. Just as the wife of Lut was <sighs> gathered with the homosexuals 
and she's never committed the abomination. Since she was pleased with their action, she received the punishment mm, with them. That's a great point. Now, the wife of Lot, she didn't do the act of right. the people of Lot. Mm -hmm. All she was just saying was, hey, leave them alone. Be you. Be you. Yeah, right, well, be you. Yeah, <laughs> just express yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone hold you back. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a bubble. Mm -hmm. Come out that closet and close right. the door. Yeah, no, it's, it's a shame. That's the thing. Even if they're not doing it, just the accepting and, and you know, and, and, and encouraging them and, and do your thing and uh -huh. continue to your, on your path. I'll support you. I'll be there to protest you. I don't do it, but I'll, I'm with right there with yeah. you, shoulder to shoulder. That is enough to, you know, open the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll be, I'll be very, very careful. I would tread very lightly if I was in that position. Like, what I even say, like, you see, because people will go and they will reduce our speech to yeah. uh, inciting violence on gay yes. people. Yeah. What did I, well, like, what I say, don't hurt yeah. any gay person. We're telling yeah. you right now, don't yeah. do it. That's the influence we of the ideology. We don't care, right? Speak out, you're violent. Yeah. But at the same time, your principles well, well, the Prophet Sallallahu said the highest level of Iman, and we're going to put this hadith on the screen so that you guys know I'm not capping. Yeah. The Prophet Sallallahu said the highest level of Iman is that you love for the sake of Allah and you hate for the sake of Allah. Mm. You love what Allah loves and you hate what Allah hates. Imagine if you don't even hate what Allah hates. Imagine if you're just neutral about it. Mm. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, he said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yugayru bi yadihi fa in lam yasati' fa bi qalbihi fa afa bi lisanihi fa in lam yasati' fa bi qalbihi wa kana adhafu al-iman. He said I'll just least, about to say that, yeah. He said the least amount of faith is that you hate evil in your heart. Right. What if you don't hate it? If the lowest level of faith is that you hate the evil in your heart, yeah. you're not speaking out against it, you're not changing it with your hand, what if you just are yeah. Neutral. Most people are not even there. A lot of Muslim youngsters are not there. So that means, where are you in this hierarchy of Iman? Called completely normalized, completely idle. It's, it's completely normal. Allah, Brother Dawood, can you please like just Help give us, advice? Bro. You know what? What should a Muslim do in this position where uh, they're you know being, you know, just bombarded with all this uh, information, this uh, ideologies, uh, all these things, and they're trying to keep their iman, their faith alive. Mm -hmm. What can they do in this situation, mm. brother? Share that with us. I think that what's very important, what is so important, yeah. is that firstly, it, we have to give ilaj. It's like literally we have to cure, cure. ourselves. Yeah. And the first and foremost thing, like you say to an addict or someone who's sick, you gotta unplug. You mm -hmm. gotta stop the habit. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? Unplug yourself from the sources of this kind of bombardment that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. whether it be the inf the influence of individuals that you walk with, whether it be the the the, the media that you're consuming, yeah. whatever it is that is causing you to adopt this ideology and feel pressure to follow this way, mm -hmm. take a step back. Even if it makes you seem like a strange sheep or anything, step back. Yeah. That has to happen because. If you're in an environment where this fisk and this mentality and ideology is being promoted, mm -hmm. you cannot change yourself. Mm -hmm. So you have to step back from there. Mm -hmm. Next, a, a strong advice, equip yourself with the necessary knowledge. Strengthen your faith and strong. aqidah in aqeedah. Islam. Yeah. Learn the aqidah, learn tawheed, learn the oneness of Allah, learn the rights of Allah, learn, have firm belief in la ilaha illallah, mm -hmm. based upon knowledge, based upon action. Mm -hmm. If you have strong knowledge of your aqidah, yeah. understand the value of la ilaha illallah, right. understand what is Islam, understand your iman, and act upon that, that's another big step. And thirdly, equip yourself with the necessary knowledge to refute the doubts of these people. You understand the things that we, we went upon, talked upon in this uh, podcast, but learn more in more mm -hmm. detail, understand where liberalism came from, learn the history of liberalism, Learn the, the actions of governments that promote liberalism, societies that promote liberalism, so you could understand what where their ills are and the evil effect. Yeah. That way, you're well equipped. You have your aqidah in Islam, you have your strong iman, and you have an understanding to refute the doubts yeah. of these people, yeah. which is these are essential things that are very important for us to protect the, f the future. Otherwise, the future, dear brothers and sisters, is going down and treading a ghost path. Yeah, well, I know, subhanAllah, uh, great point about our brother um, Dawood and Ali Deen. You know, and we're at this level right now. Um, there's, no, there's no excuse with Allah at this moment. 
everything knowledge is literally at the tip of our fingers we cannot say we don't know there's first of all uh, just in Minnesota alone, there are many places in the Twin Cities where you can go and seek knowledge. Mm -hmm. Let's say you can't. There's a lot of durus on YouTube. Let's say you don't have time to watch a video. There's podcasts of knowledge where you can go to. No excuse. There, what excuse do you have? All right. You have all of the books of Hadith, everything in English, the necessary information, not everything, of course, in English. And then... You have even, if you know Arabic, that's even more, you have more access to this information. Do you think on the day of judgment, when Allah asks you, why didn't you learn about this stuff? You can say, well, I was, well, I was too busy. Mm. I was too busy. Too busy or too lazy? Mm. You were too busy and too lazy working for the hellfire. So today you earned it. Go. Is that the sort of conversation we want to have with Allah? Well, I sit and think about this. What excuse do we have today when people in you know, generations before us had to go and travel months for one hadith to learn the Qur'an? They had to travel by foot. Hardship, right? Their traveling was not cars and planes. Mm. Their traveling was camels. And if you were lucky, you had a camel or a horse or a donkey. You don't have that, you're walking the whole time. And you better watch out for bandits, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you have a family at home, you better make sure they have enough food to survive. You see what I'm saying? More hardship will lie. We live in comfort, brother. In yeah, luxury. And we still don't want to learn our deen. We still don't want to learn our aqidah. We still don't know how to we still don't want to know how to function as a Muslim. Well, lie even in the Western countries, they don't fight you for your deen. There's places where you're not even allowed to practice. Yeah. They don't care. If you go tell the authorities, hey, I'm going to learn Sahih Bukhari. I don't care. Yeah, your business. <laughs> this is a free country. Go yeah. do what you want. At least you got that. Mm. We pride yeah. ourselves of living in a free country, yet we don't want to learn the deen of Allah. Mm. Wallahi, this is hujjah alayna akbar min, uh, min ikhwanina fi kunni makan. In different places, in third world countries, in China, in Sin, where our brothers and sisters are in concentration camps. They can't practice. They're forced uh, khamr and, and, and haram. They have to force, their, they can't practice Ramadan. They can't pray. They can't do all those things. They're re-educated. And we're sitting here and asking, well, but why, why, why do we, like, do we have to pray at all of the times? Like, do, or could we just combine it when we get? Mm. So I think this comfort for some of us is actually a punishment. It's not a blessing for some of us because if we're using it and we're living in it and it's causing us to go to the hellfire, how could you call that a blessing? But if it's a punishment, then it's not because of Allah, it's because of what our hands have earned. Now, Ali Dean, what do you want to close with? Yeah, with? no, Jazakallah uh, Well, we all, you know, made some great points uh, today uh, on this podcast. You know, may Allah bless those who are also listening um, and, and can take advantage of this. You listening here today is actually um, a guide us on the right path. And us sitting here today is, is also a guidance for us too, alhamdulillah. Um, just, you know, again, one more time, we don't, we're not asking or telling you to oppress um, other communities. We're not telling you to fight them. We're not telling you to do anything crazy. We just want you to increase in your faith in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in doing so, you will find your own law and order that Allah has put in place for you to be successful in the dunya and in the akhirah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And it was not justified by money. It's not justified by your education or anything of that nature. It is justified by your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding the aqidah, understanding tawheed, just like Brother, uh, Brother Ad Dawood said. And, and, and continuing on that path, it can get rough. Yeah. It can get tough, especially living in, in Western society. It is very hard for us. Um, we are at a time where holding on to your, your faith, holding on to Islam is like holding on to a hot coal, as the Prophet Ali said, so has mentioned. Jazakallah uh, khairan. Brother Dawood, what would you like to uh, conclude with? And Brother Ali did a very good conclusion there. But uh, the, more, the most I can add to that is essentially... Um, be understanding that you are in this being in this society is definitely you are at default a stranger mm -hmm. and accept that you're going to be a stranger and in fact embrace the fact that you're a stranger right right and understand within that there is reward from Allah and ultimately 
remember your greater purpose in life. Always refresh this. No, well, how do you do that? Revive it. Revive it constantly. I'm in need of this. Everyone's in need of this. Yeah. We live in a very, um, you know, tempting society. Yeah. So you constantly got to review and kind of revive that by being consistent with your salah, being consistent with coming to the masajid, adhkar, having good company. Like, be have a plan, have a game plan. Like, mm. you got to be with good people, surrounded. You know, you got to progress. If you don't feel like you're progressing your Islam and Iman in terms of seeking knowledge and your worship is not going up, then you're going down by mm. default. Either you're going up or you're going down. That's just the way it works. So make a game plan. Make sure that you're gaining the correct Islamic knowledge, mm -hmm. surrounded by the right, correct uh, company, and cut off sources of filth in your heart, specifically electronic devices, mm -hmm. uh, social media, and stuff that we consume. These, these are things that are negatively affect our heart. And in, indirectly, they do the two evils. What are what? Shahwat and Shubuhat. Mm. The doubts and desires. and desires. That's the destruction of everything. So if you're able to avoid doubts, how do you avoid doubts? By not exposing yourself to it, by not sitting with those who give you doubts, by, uh, 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 by increasing yourself with Islamic knowledge, the mm -hmm. necessary Islamic knowledge in your aqidah like we mentioned. How do you avoid shahwat? Well, simple. Stay away from places where temptations and lusts are being promoted and those people who intrigue you to do that kind of stuff. If you cut off those two things, you will, inshallah, bi ta'ala, improve your state in this world and you'll make your test living in this society a lot easier for yourself. So this is a, a tip to myself and all Muslims mm -hmm. who are essentially living in the Western society. This is the best way we can improve ourselves. And if we all do this in large numbers, we can improve uh, our community and our ummah at large, bi ta'ala. Um, and so, barakallah fikum. And, you know, uh, what, what truer statement... The, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran فَاسْبِرْ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقِّ وَلَا يَسْتَخِفَّنَّكَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُوقِنُونَ mm -hmm. He says So be patient indeed the promise of Allah's truth and let them not disquiet you uh, who are not certain don't let the people that are doubtful quiet you right so like the brother was saying like Ali Dean was saying if you can't change your environment than change yourself it all starts with here inside your heart and you need to take those necessary steps and you have to cut off the people you need to cut off right and you need to embrace being in places that Allah is pleased with